So you think computer games are more exciting than old-fashioned toys? Maybe you should think again. With the help of the great British public, it's time to liberate them from the toy cupboard, supersize them and unleash their true potential. This week, Airfix. I take a bunch of unruly teenagers. Was he what? Was he mental? No, he wasn't mental. It's nuts, they're and show them the really joy of model making. Do you get more like for older people, not really for kids? Is it? I also realise a childhood dream. There's England upside down. And I have some work done on my face. I prove that I'm still down with the kids. Who's Beyonce? You don't know who Beyonce is. You're actually joking me. All with the aim of building the biggest model aeroplane the world has ever seen. Do you think it would be possible to replicate the simplest Spitfire kit, but scale of one to one? No. If I had to identify the most important influences on my young life, then, well, my mum and dad would be in first place, obviously. And then a few outstanding teachers. And there was a girl called Jane who developed quite quickly. But in fourth place, in all seriousness, would be Airfix. This is a Hawker Hunter. I know that without having to look at the plaque behind it. If you're my age, you probably know that as well, because you made the model. It was always very difficult to get near real aeroplanes, but by making models, you could have a whole air force from all over the world, and it all fitted on a tabletop. It was brilliant. You might think Airfix is just a cheap pastime designed to keep kids off the street and stop them knocking a policeman's helmet off with a catapult, but it's so much more than that. It was actually designed to be educational. I mean, look at the things you can't help learning about if you make models. Aviation, military history, automotive engineering, space flight, railway architecture and rolling stock, human anatomy, the industrial revolution, lives of the saints and even, if you were a bit soft, blue tits. I think Airfix is good character-building stuff for young people. After all, look how well I turned out. But since the mid-80s, sales of plastic kits have plummeted, which is why GCSEs have to be made easier these days. Today, most of the people making Airfix kits are as old as me. In this scene, filmed secretly in a London model shop, we have obscured their faces to protect their identities and spare their families. All of this makes it doubly difficult to get young people interested in Airfix modelling, because let's be honest, they've grown up with some pretty remarkable things. Video games, an entire record collection that goes in a little box in your back pocket and is never scratched. All I could offer them is a pile of plastic parts and an old hobby populated by old men. I want to see Airfix reclaimed by the young, so I've come to the Thomas Telford School, near Telford, to recruit some 13-year-olds for my campaign. Airfix demands patience and the ability to sit still for more than five minutes. In my spare time, I'm more of a sporty person doing taekwondo and cheerleading. Normally, when I get home, I would either go on the computer or play on the Xbox. I like to play hockey, I swim, and I sail at Chalmers Sailing Club. When I was 13, doing airfix at school would have been almost as good as a day off because the boilers had broken. Things may have moved on. I've got a project which I want you to have a go at. It is an airfix model. This is the very first airfix model ever made, the first kit they did from 1952. It's the Golden Hind warship. When that model came out, people about your age and a bit younger went absolutely mad for it. They thought it was the best thing ever created, a ship you could actually build yourself, and they sold hundreds of thousands of them. The 13-year-olds went mad with excitement. 
and, as if I needed to, I offered them a further incentive to get stuck into Airfix. And if you do like it, I've got some other Airfix-related stunts and activities lined up that you can come and help me with. But only if you like it. If you turn out to be absolutely useless at it, I'll have to go to a school in Yorkshire or something. When I was a lad, Airfix was a joy, but a joy tempered with deep frustration. In this age of shallow fads and swift gratification, it seems that it still is. And that's good. Hello. What's happened? I just stuck it and now it's foul and now them come loose. Did you break that in a rage? Maybe. Maybe you did, Maybe. didn't you? No. It's fun, it's just really frustrating. <laughs> I keep gluing it, but it keeps falling apart. I think James was interested in this because it was the fashion and, like, it was the only thing to do. And it was basically what all boys did. What don't you like about it? I think it's a bit more, like, for older people, not really for kids. Is it? I think so, yeah. What I'd forgotten in the last 40 years is that the Golden Hind is a pretty tricky little kit. <laughs> Can't do it. This is really difficult now. And it's a bit of a boring old boat. I think my best chance of reaching the hearts and minds of today's young people through Airfix is to ask them to make the greatest, the most popular, the most iconic Airfix model of all time. And that is, of course, the Supermarine Spitfire. Here's one I made earlier. 1975, I think. But this won't be a normal airfix kit. I've got something more inspirational in mind. Here's my plan. Eventually, I want my chosen young people to join together in making an airfix Spitfire. Just one. And for that reason, the original airfix Spitfire kit is not really good enough. I thought they should have something a bit bigger. And after a bit of thought, I've settled on an airfix Spitfire kit at a scale of one to one full size, as big as the real aeroplane, but made up from the same parts as the original kit. I'm not actually sure how to do this, but it can't be impossible. In fact, I'm amazed it hasn't been done before. I decide to start at Airfix's HQ, now part of the Hornby Empire in Margate. Here, I intend to feign interest and then, when no one's looking, nick the plans for the original kit. But Trevor Snowden has worked for Airfix since I had glue on my face, and he easily sidetracks me onto a visit to Airfix's spare parts store. First thing we have here, of course, is the spares department, where if you lose the part, damage it, then we do, in fact, supply a replacement part. If you haven't got the part, you can't complete the model. Um, and it's one of the things that Airfix pride themselves in, that we will replace them. This is like the Ark of the Covenant, in kit form, with comprehensive instructions. Walking through it is like shining a light into some neglected corner of childhood. I'd save up for ages mm. to buy yeah, well. one fairly small model and then, you know, make it, and then I'd be slightly sad when I'd finished it because I'd have to yeah. save up again to buy another one. I never had the luxury of thinking, I've got too many no. models to make, I'd better put some in the loft. It's madness. But you must have some in the loft now. I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I got a bit older, yes. people still bought them for me for my birthday, but yeah. I had discovered beer and ladies, ladies by then, so they ended up in the loft and they're still there. Finally, we make our way to the ancient archives. Somewhere in here are the plans for a Spitfire. Some of these drawings are as old as me and even more fragile. Oh, yes. Mark April 76, five, Mark April 76. 5. But it doesn't take much of a leap of the imagination to see that if you made these bits bigger, you'd have a kit, but that would give you a full-size Spitfire. Well, that's If you see true. where I'm coming yes, from. Yes, sure. Uh, you might want a very big moulding machine. Yeah, we can probably get around there. Yeah. After slipping the priceless Spitfire drawings up my shirt, I visit one of the factories where Airfix kits are made, with its MD, Paul Blackmore. It's a fascinating process. These two plates come together to form the mould. Hot liquid plastic is injected, allowed to cool, and there you have it. Piece of cake or a Spitfire. Do you think it would be possible to replicate the simpler Spitfire kit in this form, on a sprue, but scale of one to one? So those fuselage halves are as big as a real Spitfire? 
No. Why not? Because the size of the tool and the weight of the tool, you would not be able to create the physical size of the tool to go on a machine. I thought he might say that. I have to find another way. That's why I borrowed the drawing. Now, whenever you drive past a historic RAF station, this is High Wycken, you will see a Spitfire on a stick. And I hate to shatter your illusions now, but they're not real. They used to be in the olden days, but they were far too valuable to leave outside. They're worth millions of pounds. So people worked out a way of making replicas, which is exactly what that is. That's actually a glass fibre Spitfire. It is, in a way, already a giant Airfix model. So whoever made that should be able to help me make my massive Airfix kit. Down in Cornwall, a company called GateGuards makes these glass fibre Spitfire lollipops. Job done? It isn't quite that simple. Now, some of you will be watching this and thinking, well, these people already make something like a giant aeroplane kit, so what is the problem? Well, there are several. One of them is that it doesn't actually go together like an Airfix kit does. Ow. This is just the fiberglass shell, and this is already fairly weighty. But because it has to live outside on a stick and it's expected to last for 50 years, they also add the bit you can see in this one they're restoring. It's actually built around this massive steel frame. And in fact, this replica Spitfire weighs almost as much as a real one, which is nearly two tons. I couldn't lift that. Time to meet displaced Brummie refugee Dave Hobson. Can he make me a giant airfix kit that's strong enough to stand up, but light enough for children to handle? What I want to know is, can you make this like that in a scale of one to one so that it looks like this? It's on the plastics runners and kids and their mums and dads can build it, paint it, put the transfers on in a public place, have a giant community Airfix modelling experience. But I need a massive kit. Ooh, uh, do you actually realise the size of that? Do you, have, do you have any idea how big? I mean, if you wanted to actually, is it OK to open this? Yeah, yeah, far away. There's only something like 20 components in it. Wow, I mean, to actually build something that size, we'd have to strengthen it up, I mean, but if you wanted it exactly like that... This isn't the sort of talk that won the Battle of Britain. <laughs> I'm not being defeatist. I, I, we, we can certainly have a go at it. It's not that big. I know this isn't going to be simple, and I know how big a real Spitfire is, but Dave shows me anyway. That's the whole width of the wing that you're asking us to build. You want me to make that in one structure? Yeah, well, top and bottom halves. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> make it's, it light, make it strong. It's a big structure. I know it is, but it's not. You know, I didn't ask you to make a Lancaster bomber, did I? But this is totally alien to what we normally I do. We, you know, I know we, it we is. Build, we build structures like real aircraft, and Look. you're asking us to build a hollow structure. Yes. Yes. It's like that first man who ever went on television. He says he didn't know what he was doing, but it's OK, because no one had ever been on television, so nobody knew what they were doing. No one's ever done this. You are a pioneer. You are the Wright brothers of giant Airfix models. Their main concern is that if they make it light enough for my purposes, it'll be too floppy and too weak, and it won't stand up, which is why they're getting all worked up about this unsupported wing nonsense. And admittedly, it's not the sort of materials and the sort of methods they're used to, but they're the nearest we have to a giant kit maker. So I think they'll do it, actually. Well, I'll have to do it, otherwise I'll be fired. I've decided to keep the giant Spitfire as a complete surprise to my Airfix disciples. They still need more kit practice anyway. But the question is, should I break them in gently or make them suffer? This is a Chieftain tank. It's a massive, great hulk of metal parts, weighs around 50 tonnes. But as an Airfix model, which is about that big, it drives you absolutely up the wall because all these wheels and these tracks are tiny little, impossibly fiddly bits. It really is utterly frustrating and actually hardly worth the bother. Right, team. I send a package to the headmaster. Dear class, please find enclosed some tanks to make. These are quite fiddly, so please be patient 
and take your time. Two boxes of tanks. Chieftain tanks and T-62 tanks. I'm effectively asking modern children to spend a few evenings in the 1960s. I'd have them eating spam fritters as well to get the full effect. You've got to find that bit two-way. They're normally numbered. But here's something I hadn't reckoned with. The dads. I played with airfixes when I was a kid all the time. I had phantoms, I had tanks, I had everything. I had aircraft carriers, the whole lot. You know, I, I'm still reliving my childhood, to be honest. Yeah, he's a big yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's a school day, so I've decided we should have a school trip on a bus. In my day, we'd have amused ourselves by making rude gestures at lorry drivers. Do you normally play with mobile phones and iPods on bus trips? Yeah. Is that all you ever do? <laughs> but let's wait until they see what I've lined up for them. This will make those long hours at the table getting a thick ear for putting paint on the carpet seem worthwhile. The chance to experience for real the thing they've just made in miniature. Not only is this much better than the field day at the sustainability farming project, it will help reveal the relevance of Airfix. Look, the whole point of making models when I was a kid is that they were supposed to be educational. The bloke who set up, or rather the bloke who ran the Airfix Models factory was a mad historian. He was absolutely obsessed with it and he thought everybody else should be. That's why he put on the instruction leaflets little bits of potted history of whatever you were making. It didn't matter if it was a tank or a the model of the human skeleton or anything. You got the history, you got the story behind it. That way you learn stuff. That's what he wanted. So you must know something about tack. Was he what? Was he mental? No, he wasn't mental. I change tack and try a bribe instead. Tank driving with Major Nick. But even at 13, that part of a woman's brain that only thinks about shoes is already fully developed. It's, um, oh, it's, oh, my God, I've got shoes on my day. Oh, my God, that is so not good. They're yeah, not really tank-driving shoes, are I really they? don't. No. If we get our wellies on? Yeah, in a minute. I don't, I don't want to it. It only here. goes down to, to your skin. Museum full of real tanks, and you're worried about your shoes and your mobile phones. <laughs> Pull yourselves together. <laughs> I'll do anything to persuade this lot that tanks are cool and that making models of them must therefore be cool too. This next bit's from a low-priced DVD. OK. Right. Give it a bit more. That's yeah, a bit front right there. Yeah, about right. Keep the power up. Plenty of power. Yeah, flat out. Go over it. Oh, yes. I love that noise. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's out there. You'll be alright. Now, between you and me, viewers, I don't really approve of running over cars with tanks. It's a bit of a cheap stunt, to be honest. I've seen it hundreds of times, and it's not exactly sporting, is it? But 13-year-old kids seem to like smashing things up, so if that's what it takes to get them on side, so be it. But as impressive as some of this footage might be, it is now possible, using readily available technology, to produce something even better using the models. This is the idea. When I was about your age, we used to build these tanks all the time, and the thing we would have wanted to do more than anything in the world is make them into a small film. OK, so we're going to do that with your tanks. It's going to be the Chieftain tanks versus the T-62 tanks. <laughs> now we've got something we used to do when I was a kid, small amounts of gunpowder out of fireworks that you put in the tank that will make the odd one explode with some sparks, which we will film. Happy to blow your tanks up? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Who said no? You don't want to blow your tank up. Well, that's OK. Yours can survive. I, I admire that. Anybody can blow things up. It takes skill to make something. I'm going to set it up on its tripod here. We'll get the shot lined up, and then you can start moving tanks and taking pictures. After just a few hours on one of the smallest action film sets in the world, a masterpiece is born. Right, rolling. I'm moving. Wow! That must have looked quite good. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Sam Peckinpah's Cross of Iron, only a bit jerky in places, but not quite as long. But it was done with a conventional stills camera and a simple computer program. The impressive bit is actually the model making.
Blowing your newly completed airfix model up with firework gunpowder or shooting at it with air rifles was perfectly normal. It was a rite of passage. But interestingly, there was one boy there who didn't want to do it. The quiet lad, Tom. He didn't want to shoot at it. He didn't want to blow it up. He wanted to keep his tank that he'd made. His tank that he'd made particularly well. Tom will go far, I think. Tom is not completely alone. There are signs that the airfix resistance is cracking. Airfix is really fiddly and annoying, but once, once you've done it, you get a really good feeling like, wow, I just did that, and then it's worth it. It's worth all the little, ah, like when you do making it and all that, it's worth all it. What's amazing, though, is that even in 2009, the Spitfire remains the most popular airfix kit. Why is this? Why are we totally transfixed by an aeroplane that is chronologically closer to the Wright brothers than it is to aircraft of today? It's a very good question. And in order to answer it, I've decided to indulge myself in some gratuitous Spitfire history. Carolyn Grace is the owner of this rare two-seater. She has flown and loved it for over 20 years. What is it about Spitfires in particular? I mean, of all the aeroplanes from that era, this one is, it just endures in a strange way. The Spitfire is, it fulfills all your senses. It's, it's, it sounds wonderful, it looks beautiful, um, and it is just superb to fly and they knew that in the war uh, and I think it, it because it's a British design at its very best I think it just it covers everything. Did you ever make an airfix Spitfire? My son did. Did he, did he make a good <laughs> Richard job of it? Did. <laughs> well he, he never painted them so we always he always ended up shooting them or burning them. <laughs> yes we should point out that Carolyn's son looks after real aeroplanes these days <laughs> including mine actually. I might find someone else. Time to get suited up, and as with all military clothing, one size is designed to fit no one. It's a bit short in the leg, but I'll take it. Are you ready to go? Ready to go. Right, here we go, take off in a Vickers Supermarine Spitfire. This is the beginning of the ultimate male fantasy. Oh, what a racket! We're flying. Nice. Very marvellous. Just have a look at this fantastic and immortal shape, everybody. But everything was this way for very good aerodynamic reason. The slim fuselage is more streamlined, but it's strong. The elliptical wings, just have a look at them. They're absolutely fabulous. Here we go. Yeah. There's England, upside down. Whoa. Like <laughs> Carolyn then fulfills a lifelong ambition for me with the immortal words, you have control. Red section, tally ho. Taka, 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 taka. Sorry, that's a bit childish, but I had to do it. <laughs> I don't really want to say anything about that, except that this is the Supermarine Spitfire, and I was flying it. That's enough gadding about as ginger. It was time to come down to Earth, in Cornwall, to see if Dave had cracked the problems with the kit version. It's now just 10 days 
before my chosen young people assemble the giant Airfix Spitfire kit. Unfortunately, it's also nearly three weeks since I heard anything from Dave, who's making the giant Spitfire kit. For some reason, he won't answer the telephone. He doesn't respond to emails. I've no idea if he still lives here even. I've had to come 300 miles all the way to Ruddy Cornwall just to find out what he's up to. So what you're about to see is a piece of genuine reality television. He doesn't know I'm here. I don't know if he is, actually. Morning, dog. Why don't you answer the bloody telephone? <laughs> I do. You don't. Because you're working. And you don't answer your emails. Yes, we do. You don't. Yes, we do. You've no idea how nervous I've been about this. You've no idea how nervous I've been about it either. But at least you know that it's hard. I don't even know that you're doing it. I'm just sitting 300 miles away thinking, is he making my Spitfire or has he oh, well, buggered off to Australia? We've, we've, we've been doing chest pushes. Look at that. Big Dave has found a combination of glue and glass fibre that keeps the polystyrene supports in place. Yep. Strength and lightness together. So that's what half the thickness of it would be in one of your that's real it, gate guard yeah. aeroplanes. Yeah. Can I feel the weight? Yep. I can lift that, and I'm feeble. It's a result, and Dave and his team can now forge ahead. Although, we've yet to see if this technique is good enough for the big wing section. But there's one job I'm not entrusting to Dave, making the pilot a critical component. I'd like it to be a full-size likeness of me, and as the job involves laying hands on me, I've rejected the big brummy, and instead I'm going to visit someone called Poppy in her Chessington studio, or shed. You've heard about this? Yes, we have been told. Airfix Spitfire. Right. And I need to be represented as the pilot, Where but I wanted it? to have my face. He's there, I've taken him off. He's tiny. He is tiny. So it needs to be in that position because he's holding the joystick and his feet go down into the cockpit to the rudder. Well, you've got quite a lot of hair, so we'll have to get rid of that first. Um, you can't take it off. We won't be that mean. We'll use a bald cap. Okay. So you can see what it feels like to have no hair. Um, and then we'll start doing your face first and then we'll work our way down the body. Right. So, are you including ready? the joystick. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. That might have to be not fun. Okay. What's the weirdest request you've ever had? I have been asked about a gentleman who wanted to make his own doorbell, um, and he said that he'd like to use a certain part of his body um, as the door pull. We do get the odd people wanting their bottoms and breasts and things like that. Let's just do my head. Brilliant. Make sure your nose is still free. Mm -hmm. OK. This takes 45 minutes to dry. And because I can't see, I don't realise that everyone else has gone for a pint. Hang on, it's very slightly stuck. There, that's it, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Mmm. Adjusting your eyes slightly. And there you have it. Wow. And that's the actual shape of my... That's pretty good, isn't it? Those are the bags under my eyes there. Captured for all time. Several hours later, my resin head is ready to be released from the mould and appropriately attired. I'm James May, and this is my partner, James May. No partner's not right, is it? That makes him sound like a gay lover. I'm not entirely sure about your eyes, you know, mate. How do you feel about being part of the world's largest airfix spitfire? You do realise that once you're stuck inside that fuselage, you're going to be in there pretty much forever. Or at least until someone shoots at you with a giant air gun or blows you up with the gunpowder from some giant bangers. This is turning into a giant project in all senses, 
Solo Airfix assembly work at the kitchen table is out. My modelling apprentices now need to learn to work as a team, and I know the perfect training location, the Jaguar factory at Castle Bromwich. Now, a lot of cars have been made in this factory over the years, ever since the 1950s, but the factory wasn't actually built to make cars at all. What was it built for? Does anybody know? It was made to build Spitfires. So today, we're going to build Spitfires. And what's more, we're going to make this kit, OK, but we're going to do it in an organised way, exactly like in this factory. Makes sense? Yeah. Can you do it? Yeah. Arrange yourselves around the table. What I tried to do here was break the making of that Spitfire model down into very specific tasks, and then we'd be able to make consistent Spitfires very quickly. Doing all this whilst watching the cars going past being made, because that's an inspiration. Do you prefer making them like this, or would you rather make them individually? This is more fun, isn't it? Yeah. I used to dream of this when I was a kid. If you could buy 50 Spitfires at once, I could get all my mates around and we could make a production line. We could make them all in a day. It would be fantastic. You don't look very convinced. What would you do with them? Give them away to a museum or something. Or shoot at them, as usual. But look at this. They're making airfix without any bullying from me. Although I have said they can't eat until they've made at least six Spitfires. Connor, let's just finish our jobs before we start assembling the cockpit. I've only got one more of these to do. Starting to see evidence of systematic working. Maybe it happens naturally when you put people together, but look, there's a little propeller assembly line going on there. There's some instrument panels being made in series there, and most impressively, come and see this. This man clearly has the right sort of mind for this. Look at that, he's ahead. Within two hours, Spitfires are rolling out of Castle Bromwich once more. It's a fantastic effort, because I said this was an easy kit. It's actually extremely tricky. It's got very difficult stuff inside the cockpit and the flaps under the wings, and they've done it excellently. I'm quite moved by it. I think they're ready. Well, they might be in the Midlands, but down in Cornwall, Dave is still not sure that the polystyrene bracing system will be good enough for the bigger bits. That's the bottom wing. Now, that across there is 34 foot, and with the wing tips on, which the tips on that side of the wing there, that then becomes 36 foot, because that's the wingspan of a Spitfire. But they wanted that in one piece. And then we tried the top wing on, exactly as the way it's cut out, and as soon as we did that and put the top wing on it, it went like that. <laughs> and that's exactly what we said it would do. So I don't have any idea as if it's going to work tomorrow. Um, and this is what's taken 16 hours extra to do. Everybody's so tired now that we're on, um, we've passed adrenaline. We've, we've gone past 48 hours of no sleep. Um, while James is probably tucked up somewhere in bed, fast asleep. It's the big day. The giant kit has arrived at RAF Cosford. Yeah, if you just put that one bar across the middle, that, that's reminiscent of what the spar would probably look like anyway across the middle of the aircraft. Why don't I just stick it? Yeah, just I'll do it. Like Before the builders arrive, I discover there's a rather pressing issue in the hangar. We have a small problem here already. This is the biggest part of the kit. You remember it's the bottom half of the wings. It comes in one piece. It is also the part around which the rest of the aeroplane will be built. Made the way we decided with the thin fiberglass and the honeycomb, it's too floppy. So it has to be strengthened with some steel pieces. Which sort of means Dave was right all along. But we can edit that out. <laughs> The Telford prodigies arrive, still oblivious of the enormity of the airfix task that lies before them. Right, gather round, everybody. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Good. This is a very important day for me, personally, because <laughs> we're going to do some airfix. Yeah. This is an ambition mm. that I've harboured <laughs> since I was about five or six years old. It's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> it's, it's a, a previous century. 
and um, it's an opportunity for you lot to be a part of history. Yay! But only the history of Airfix. <laughs> but that's pretty good. Cue the door, sir. There's the box with artwork. It's a Spitfire. When I saw the kit, I was like, oh my god, we're never going to be able to do this because it was absolutely massive. I was really shocked that it was actually that big, and I was like, how are we going to stick this together with glue like that? <laughs> It's like James. 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 That's James. It's, it's creepily lifelike. This is the biggest Airfix model in the world. There has never been one this big before. This is where you have to apply everything that we've learned about making Airfix models over the past few weeks. Still up for it? Yeah. 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 Right, good. The first job is to remove all the pieces from the sprue. That's the frame holding them together for those of you who don't know Airfix and are therefore incomplete. Lift. Ellie and Caitlin yeah. land the plummiest job in the hangar, painting me. That's one of the harnesses in it, so that's going to need to be black. Yeah, this will be yellow because it's a life jacket. Yeah, are they going to be black as well because they're little like, toggle things? Yeah, toggles. But it's not long before we hit a problem. The steel reinforcements have, after all, made that big wing piece a bit weighty. Right, in order to lift that main bottom wing section up and turn it up the other way and put it on the trestles, we need more people, because that really is too heavy for you to lift. So if you all go and find one other person, there's Air Force cadets, there's a fat bloke from Birmingham over there. <laughs> Some of you have got uh, mums and dads and things here. Can you help us, please? Can you help us to lift the wings in there, please? Yeah, that's fine. To your duties, fall out. Well, I know, but as long as you were that one... Luckily, my father has turned up to help. Only right, really, because this is all his fault. I have to confess, I initiated him with a Spitfire. That was his first Airfix model. Um, we did it together. It was a gift for him to start with in the local newsagent shop, a little Airfix kit. And then he became a regular visitor to the local news agents when he saved up enough money to buy the next kit and the next kit and so on. And now, the lifting of the bottom wing. I feel a bit for the youths. They have an Airfix model to build and not for the first time, dads have taken over. Here you go. Should we try that? Yeah, that's fine. That's, 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 that's fine. Happy? Success. The biggest piece is in position, and perhaps more surprisingly, still one piece. Now youth's exuberance can be added to the mix, gluing together the two halves of the fuselage. This is tricky when they're five inches long. These ones are almost 30 feet. Concentrate on the top edge and then get it up and get the bottom edge lined up. Afterwards, I think. There's a chance of getting both edges lined up with that floppy and nil, aren't they? Uh, or close to them, I think. Yeah. Good thinking, Dad. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> I've told them a hundred times not to use too much glue, but of course they don't listen, and I'm beginning to think they shouldn't. All right, right. it's boss. You ready? Three, two, one, glue. <laughs> Superb. The fuselage is now one piece. That is set aside to dry while we add the top halves of the wings. 
Three, two, one. Gently up. Careful. This way. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> I know this is going to sound a bit nerdy and sentimental for a 46-year-old man, but this is actually something I dreamt about when I was about six or seven years old. Could you make an Airfix model the size of a real aeroplane? And there it is, look. There are the wings of the giant Airfix. There are the wings of the original kit. There's the giant Airfix fuselage. There's the original Airfix fuselage. I never thought that would actually happen. And there it is. That's excellent. With the aeroplane coming together, I wonder if Ellie and Caitlin are doing my body double justice. You got a lot of paint on your hand. Uh, yeah, we didn't have gloves. And I wouldn't bother cleaning it off because you're bound to get some more on. Can you have your lunch very quickly and then get back and, you know? You've got to go. That's go why we clean our hands. Go to see Beyonce. Who's Beyonce? You see. don't know who Beyonce is. You're actually joking me. You know who Beyonce is. Oh, no, I don't. You, American yeah. singer. Are you going to a concert? Yeah. So you're saying you're going to go and see Beyonce rather than stand Beyonce. here? Beyonce. Beyonce. Uh, You'd rather do that than stay here and paint a big plastic model of me? Uh, um, yeah. We tried to do both. Well, you haven't done very well. You've done the boots and you've got brown paint on the boots. Ellie, that was, Caitlin, that was, that was your half. That was your boot, that was mine. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Honestly, young people, they don't know anything. With two recruits going AWOL and the others more interested in mucking around than doing airfix, even I can tell that I'm not winning these kids over. I think James is like a perfectionist here, so he's really like wants everything perfect. It's really annoying. You're 13, you should be able to do that. I think James is quite bossy because he is a perfectionist. He wants it to be perfect. He's a little bit fussy with the painting and how, how careful you, you do everything. OK, time to change tack. Time to let the kids do it their way, however much it hurts. So you've kept me with my eyes closed? Yeah. How do I see where I'm going? Um. <laughs> or am I just having a bad moment on approach? I think you've just sneezed. Just sneezed, OK. I'm not convinced that he really wanted to let anybody else play with this other than himself. You've put a few hairs up my nose as well. Yeah, try and make it as realistic as possible. Right, all right, all right, all right. He's doing very well not to shoo them all away and roll his own sleeves up and do it all himself, I think. I allow Connor to replace me as foreman. I taught him well. There's a little bit to blue here and there. I want to give it maybe enough coat. And um, you've been a bit messy with that painting on there, just like you've ended up splattering it all over the floor. I need someone for a very dangerous job. I do. I'll do it. You do everything. Hoisting the fuselage onto the wings is a top job for any Airfix fanatic. But I graciously allow Tom to be the main man here. We've got to go over there and pull that chain. The chain that lifts the Spitfire up into the air to go onto the wings. No pressure, Tom. If it breaks, everyone will hate you. It's a tense moment. If my polystyrene ribbing isn't strong enough, the fuselage will now break up in mid-air. The fuselage takes the strain, but there is a small problem. It doesn't line up, does it? We didn't think carefully enough about where we positioned this before we started putting the fuselage on the things. We try some adjustments. Go. Okay. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pause. But even then, we have to resort to a power saw. Seasoned Airfix modelers will know that you sometimes have to trim the parts very slightly in order to make them fit together properly. That's exactly what we're doing here. It looks like it looks like a huge amount being cut away, but that's only because it's a very huge model. The team is working excellently and efficiently together, largely because 
I've been made redundant. Extend the, um, the brown spot out by, like, a bit further. Make it the same shape, though. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I begin to think that we, or they, might actually get this model finished and that the young people might even enjoy it. Wow, look at that. That's looking like a real spitfire. Put it a bit more to the left. OK, Carl, are you reaching OK there? Yeah, I'm reaching OK. okay Lift it a bit. The Spitfire is progressing well, but we're almost out of time. And what the workers don't know is that I've arranged for their model to be revealed not just to their families, but to people who actually flew these planes in the war. What sort of quality or what it's made of, I haven't the vaguest idea. How they're going to build up a right size model of a Spitfire, I think will be extraordinary. I'm looking forward very much to seeing it. I think it's brilliant. Well, I expect it to be of a very high standard. But there is one last critical job to be done. Everything that has been achieved up until this moment is effectively pointless because the true test of this Spitfire is whether or not it will stand on its own wheels when the trestles and the props are taken away. And it's not only the Spitfire that has to rest on those wheels, it's the reputation of Big Dave from Cornwall. In the next 10 or 15 seconds, he could be a broken man the wheels are put on, and the aeroplane must be winched down to see whether it will support itself or fall to pieces when the kit and legs take the full strain. It's so close to breaking. Yeah. Is that officially down? It's officially down. Congratulations. Good work. We've done it. The world's biggest airfix model is complete. And our VIP guests have been waiting long enough. It's time to reveal it. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle. For the first time in more than 60 years, the hangar doors of RAF Cosford open to reveal a brand new Spitfire. But as ours is only a model, we're not sure it will make this next bit. Simply crossing the hangar threshold is a mighty undertaking for this Spitfire. Jimmy. Yes. more and stop. Bravo. Well done. Excellent work. God, that's made me feel quite emotional. Fantastic. I don't know what to say. I know you've done it already, ladies and gentlemen, but this lot built it and painted it and we're very patient. Give them another round of applause, please. It's absolutely superb. Thank you, everyone. I didn't expect it to be that big, actually. I thought it'd be a little, a little airfix model. <laughs> so, yeah, I was quite shocked. All that hard work, end result, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It was much better than I expected with all the smoke as well. It, was, it made us really proud, didn't it? it? Did, See, yeah. being um, pulled out, it was fabulous, really good. Beside my dad, my mum has also come along for the unveiling. What do you think of that, then? I never doubted for a moment that you and the team would achieve what you set out to do. That's very not you. That's a very motherly thing to say, Mother. I've been practising. But what did real Spitfire pilots make of our model? Was it up to scratch? <laughs> I must say the paint job's good. We've got the colours right. Absolutely terrific, because it looked just like them. Really very clever. Can't think how you did it. And they were beautiful to fly. Congratulations, it's wonderful what you've done. Thank you. I, I think you're really proud of yourself. 
We must have done a good job because we earned the approval of none other than the general manager of the RAF Museum at Cosford, Alex Medhurst. I'd put it in our exhibition. You would? Oh, yeah, definitely. Will you? Because we haven't got yes, a home for I will. it. You will. will. Excellent. Right, I'll there you go. It. It's yeah. got a home. Yeah. I've got a bit of a lump in the throat, so I might have to go away. <laughs> but the real test for me is, did a new generation enjoy it? Or have I put them off Airfix forever? I do feel proud of what we've achieved. We've made a whole um, life-size Spitfire out of Airfix. I think that because of doing that, I probably will actually do a lot more um, Airfix in the future. Yeah, there might be more airfix in the future. Hopefully big ones. I think the, some of the boys will probably carry on building airfix models, whether the girls will or not, I don't know, but uh, my house is now full of Spitfires, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, it's just possible that this great old hobby still has something going for it. And our Spitfire can stand as a monument to what it's all about. One day, these children will be as old as me, but maybe they'll bring their children to this museum and they'll look at the Spitfire that they built and they'll say, that's what it was all about. That is the spirit of Airfix.